Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. And our next guest has a video circulating viral. It was actually covered on Huffington Post today in their media section. InfoWars Confrontation, Boston resident blasts Dan Badandi over marathon bombing conspiracy theories. And it has a video. And we're going to go to a short clip of this. It's, it's pretty long. It's got a lot of uh, cursing in it. So we're not going to play, play those sections. But here's the video, and then we're going to bring on the guest. Yeah, trying to You're trying to what? You're trying to like put more right wing conspiracy theories? You're not covering what's going on here. Your boy said this was a false flag. The bomb that blew up people was a false flag. What is that supposed to mean? No, the FBI's behind the bombing. That's what you're here to cover. And that's why I'm the asshole. Because the FBI blew up those people at the Boston Marathon. That's right. That's because you're a dope. And what you say is dangerous, and people like you shouldn't be able to drive a car much less espouse your opinions in public. But we have a First Amendment, we got to protect it. All right, we have a First Amendment, we got to protect it. The one redeeming quality in that video. And uh, we have the man behind the camera right now, Roger Nicholson. He's a musician, a gonzo journalist. He said he's a self-seeker. And, um, I, you know, I wanted to give him a chance to come on and talk about, you know, his feelings about this whole thing and see if maybe we could show him the stuff we have and... Um, We'll take it from there. His uh, Facebook is pitpat71, so you can check that out. Roger, how are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. All right. So what what day did that uh, confrontation take place? That was Friday. That was when the, our city was on a lockdown, allegedly, according to you guys. That's when no one could leave their apartments and everyone was uh, being terrorized by the uh, police. But that was actually, uh, that was Friday. That was the day I left my apartment and went over to my old neighborhood where I used to live in Cambridge, in mm -hmm. East Cambridge, and uh, went to go see what was going on. That's when I was driving around Watertown under this martial law. So there you go. So, so you actually, you went against all. police wishes, wishes for a, uh, a there was lockdown. No police, there, wasn't, there was no police wishes that way. The people who were in Watertown, and my good, I've lived there, my dear friends live there, my, my one of my best friend's mother's a city councilor in Watertown. The reason people were in their houses was because some maniac with a, a guy gun uh, they thought they said assault rifles they weren't sure with bombs was walking around their neighborhood so they're like look don't go outside till we catch the guy uh and if you had known what it was like to live in boston that night i was listening to the scanner the whole night it was insane it was the most crazy thing i've ever heard and there was i mean i heard the scanner the police were screaming about bombs going off i lived three miles away and i heard one of the bombs go off from uh, from from the shootout mm -hmm. so yeah, it wasn't martial law. It was people trying not to get killed by some some crazy kill for all us son of a bitch walking through the neighborhood. So anyway, just wanted to clear that up. Okay, no, that's great. And um, and then wh how did you uh, come in contact with Dan? Did you see him and seek him out, or did you just happen to run into not, him? I was getting pictures. I was, like, doing my own little whatever. I was getting pictures of uh, covering it my own way. I'm very curious. I like to go and you know, explore, see what's going on. And I went down to Watertown. I watched Deval Patrick make the speech, uh, press conference over by the Arsenal Mall. And then I went down to Cambridge because I lived 100 feet from those kids uh, two years before that. I lived there. That was my neighborhood for almost 20 years. And I lived right next, like 100 feet from those kids. I never met them, but, you know, so I was like curious. And I saw him, Dan, walking around with his camera and I had was like that's the guy who's been interrupting the press conference with his with his nonsense and uh i got kind of incensed and you know he was by the way i need to say this dan i've since spoken to him after this and i believe that dan has uh, got a good heart and i think he's a good man i think he's been misled and i think the uh intoxicating effect of being a info warrior and having your whole persona wrapped up into that that has corrupted him, but I think he's a good person, and I think his heart is good. But, you know, I think a lot of other people that follow Alex Jones are, obviously, but they've, uh, they've been indoctrinated in their own way. So, uh, anyway, I'm getting off the subject. Well, I think people get indoctrinated into different things. You could be totally into sports. You could be totally into the system, or you could be totally questioning the system. And we do. We question that system a lot. Well, I understand that you guys think there's some nobility and something something of merit in what you're doing, but... You know, you come off to me as anti-patriots, un-American, mm -hmm. and people that keep this country from unifying, which is not what anybody wants. And I really believe that, uh, I've said this on Martin Bashir, that I think that 
InfoWars has become the Westboro Baptist Church of Journalism, and I think you guys are completely out of your minds, and that's the way I feel. And I know I can say that because uh, I'm sane and I'm self-aware. So believe me, you're taking it from a guy who does a lot of self, uh, self-assessment. You guys are crazy, and it's all right, but you're making things difficult on people who aren't crazy. Okay. Well, let's talk about a few things that you say we're crazy about, which is uh, possible FBI involvement or FBI stand downs or, you know, basically the fact that the FBI was watching these guys for at least two years, probably five years before yeah. the bombings took place. Okay. Now, so I've what got, do you want? What's there's up? a bank robber. There's a guy, there's a bank robber who lives down the street. What do you got to watch him? every five seconds to make sure he doesn't rob a bank how are you gonna how are you gonna like do this i'm not like by the way i'm really anti-jihadist muslim i'm like i people think i'm like some racist <laughs> excuse me mm -hmm. because i'm so anti-jihadist but i think they're terrible well not and many not, not many bank it. robbers are warned by the russian government about people who that's, enter their country right but that's fine but what are you what are you gonna do you throw them out because they're because they're 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 like insane and they're crazy and they're like religious zealots. Even I, who am against those religions and the way people take them, even I know you can't throw anyone out of the country because that's not a, that you can't throw someone out because they're a crazy lunatic. I, I'm not they, talking about they, throwing them out of the country. What all you people from InfoWars, if we throw people out of the country being crazy and, lunat and, and, and lunatics, we'd have, have no place to put all you people. No, so we, we started, are you talking about the Piers Morgan petition? Piers, no, I, Piers Morgan's, he's more patriotic and American than you guys. Just want you to know that. Really? He's a Brit. Yeah, he's a better American than you. Yeah. You, so you're yeah. not you're not for the Second Amendment then, are you? No, I'm totally for You know, look at my Facebook page. I got an AR-15 and a three and a, a 357 in my hand. I'm totally Second Amendment, but I want these lunatics. I, background checks, you should make it harder for people to get guns because obviously people are misusing using them and people the dumbest people in the world own guns the dumbest people in the world own guns look at youtube watch people put these rednecks playing with their guns and how stupid they are and you just want these people like yeah here have a gun it's like i don't want like five-year-olds driving a car it's like you got it and some of these people are mentally five years old and i don't want them having a gun they gotta prove that they're responsible for a gun you can't just give everyone a goddamn hand cannon and be like yeah this is this is like not a suicide pact. That's what okay. it is. All right. Well, I've let you. I've let you talk there. I didn't want to interrupt you. Let's go back to the FBI. They put pictures of these guys on there on the TV in front of the media, saying, "We don't know who these guys are. We think these are the bombers. These are the only pictures you should look at. Don't look at any other pictures." Yet they had been watching these guys. They've been contacted by the Russian government, and the mother claims who said. She was the one who broke the news, saying that they were being watched by the FBI. She also said the FBI called her sons after the bombing. So why are they acting like they don't know who these guys well, are? Right, that, that moron mother is not exactly credible in my book. Okay? Well, she broke the FBI stories, and when the FBI was asked about it, they initially denied it, and then they came back and said, oh, yeah, we were watching these guys since so, 2011. You know, you know what? You're right. They did plant the bomb. They blew those people up. So, yeah. I'm, I'm not so saying that. I'm well, saying that's what Dan was saying. That's what everyone, that, these crisis actors, that's offensive because, and I don't mean that in a way where in a liberal, oh my God, that's offensive. I don't mean it that way. I mean offensive in, my friend Tracy almost was 20 feet from a bomb and almost died. She was so close to that explosion. She ran for the fear of her life and saw a seven-year-old little girl got her leg blown off. And her brother, the little girl's brother was already killed. And she held this girl's head while they were trying to stop her bleeding a seven-year-old and you're calling this little girl with her leg blown off a crisis actor and my friend tracy a crisis actor and jeff bowman who blew got his legs blown off as a crisis actor that comes from you guys and no, that's what you that guys doesn't come from us i think you're projecting that onto us we uh, never mentioned there's plenty of people out there that have said crisis actors and we've interviewed some people about that in, in terms of sandy hook in the past what you guys invented this crisis at sandy hook parents no, are we did not invent that that comes out from people on the internet looking at stuff. Oh, and you can actually find, way. you can find pictures out there where they've taken amputees and dressed them up as battle wound victims. They do You're it with the army all the time. That's offensive, not in a way where you tell a, a black racist joke offensive. That's offensive, like you think I'm so stupid and or you must think I'm brain damaged where I'm gonna believe that. So that's where like, this is, this is where you I, and I- I think we're gonna pull up the picture now. Of, uh, we're going to pull up the picture now of 
crisis well, actors well, being I'm, used, amputees being used in crisis actors. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying you're saying that's a complete conspiracy theory that there's no such thing as crisis actors. That's not what happened in Boston. And that tragedy in Boston is not show material for InfoWars, which is what you want to make it. No. Show material. We came it's out. Like, look, exploit the victims. That's fine. I mean, that, you, you can swim in that. I don't. Look, we came out in the beginning and said if there's a drill, then there's probably some either provocateur or they knew about it or they even helped it happen. And we have plenty of evidence that the FBI has done this in the past. I want to go to a video real quick. This go is a, a, a horrible conspiracy theorist, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Just listen to what he says. This is cut up from a larger piece. But you like, can... looks like the monsters. Okay, well, <laughs> let's hear what he has to say. Can the federal government take credit for saving us from a plot of its own creation? The FBI has foiled about 17 plots to kill Americans during the past 10 years. They all have a common and reprehensible thread. They were planned, plotted, controlled, and carried out by the federal government itself. In all these cases, agents worked undercover and portrayed themselves to the targets as Arabs of like un-American mind. So it goes longer, but what happened was they had either agents going in, undercover agents that, that, they, that they were FBI agents that were going in provoking these guys, saying, hey, we'll get you the bomb, we'll get you the supplies, we'll get you the detonators, or they had guys that they had already busted on something else and saying, hey, we want you to go find people and bring them to us. They created 17 separate plots. I know Dude, you don't want to believe that. When I was a kid, all the people with conspiracy theories were hippies who smoked too much weed uh -huh. and now it's like it's which i find an unmanly not, i'm not the most masculine person in the world and your fans have let me know how just how effeminate i am but that's unmanly those hippies with other conspiracy theories about the government and the only thing about and i find it unmanly to be so uh, conspiracy oriented and but the thing is about you people you don't smoke weed you guys play with guns so that's what makes you guys dangerous and like you scare people like regular normal americans so i just thought you should just know that okay that's how well, well, thanks for letting us know that. I also want to point you to a New York Times article, Terrorist Plots Hatched by the FBI, which also talks about all that, too. So it's in the New York Times, not just InfoWars. I'm glad that you've gotten down to the bottom of the FBI as the ones that are, like, terrorizing Americans. I just, I just, you know, I'm just... So you think that's okay that the FBI could terror, that they set up terror plots? I have this information in front of me, and I don't believe your version of what you're saying so you can't just like ask me how i feel about an, an article that you've read that i have no access to and haven't read and you know you can't like really like throw that on me expect me to have an answer but you can but you can say that like, i'm part of the, the conspiracy whatever i don't care but i'm, I'm not saying, saying you're part of a conspiracy i'm just trying to educate you brother that's all i'm trying to dude, do don't believe me i have a my iq is about one 130 what well, depends on what internet i take it on but i'm about 130 so my iq is pretty i'm pretty sharp Believe me, I, and you can try to educate me, but I'm, so, you know, I'm very good at doing that myself. Do, so. Does your high IQ preclude, preclude you from looking at different uh, scenarios that might involve Let's the FBI? Like this. You can give me scenarios, but you also tell me that Vin Diesel's in a movie, and I already know the movie sucks because Vin Diesel's in it. So when you come up with like, oh, read this conspiracy theory, it's from Infowars. I'm like, it's from Alex Jones. Like, yeah, New York oh, yeah, Times. That's garbage. Here's, can't read it. here's the Washington Post. Anti-terror task force warned of Tamerlan Zarnoff's long trip to Russia. This was the trip that the Russians actually called the United States about and said, hey, why is this guy getting in and out of our country under an assumed name? There it is right listen, there. I'm like, listen, I'm not saying that they, they handled it this perfectly, but what are you going to do? Crawl up his ass with a microscope because he went to Russia? I'm not, listen, I'm against, but see, that's the thing. You're trying to make it sound like he's not the guy who blew up the bombs, but he had pictures of him doing it. But of course, your pictures say something totally you know, different. They so say they have, pic they have pictures of him like carrying backpacks. They have not shown us pictures of them dropping the bombs. Even the governor of Massachusetts, Deval Patrick, wait one second, when asked, did he see the video? He said, no, it was described to me by the FBI. You know, it's all going to come out. Like, they don't, they're not going to give you everything. It'll come out in court. You'll see. Uh -huh. Yeah, just like, just like the security that, cameras at, the, at Oklahoma but, City. You know I live in a great place. I live in America. I love my country. I have to deal with some left-wing nudniks. And I have to deal with some of you people uh -huh. who run your mouth. And it's okay. I live in a great American place. I, I love my country. I'm a patriot. I love America, even though people act like they are patriotic and they're not. So I, we'll have to put up with you people. I really wish that the people who follow you and pay money to watch your 
that would get mental help because it's like their mental illness is like a rash and Alex Jones is the hand that's scratching it. So they're, they're just feeding into their, 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 they're being unwell with this. So, so, so being patriotic is bowing down to the government, whatever they no, wish. If they want to come to your house and say, not coming up, he's not saying the government's trying to kill me and come up with every cockamamie excuse and conspiracy theory, being paranoid and ridiculous is not a patriotic act. And I'm not one of those people. You guys are paranoid and you're ridiculous. So whatever. Send I'm, your I'm, hate, backing, whatever. I'm backing it all up right here. I'm not bowing to anyone. I don't know what you think, who you think I'm bowing to, but I don't bow to anybody. Well, you're saying I, you're patriotic and we're not. So I'm trying to find out why you're saying that. You guys, are, you guys are more interested in finding out what's wrong with everything. And you guys are more interested in per, uh, perpetuating this paranoia. It's, but it's self. It's a secondary game. Hey, if the and FBI guys, is planning well, and taking part in terror plots, I would like to know that. I feel like you are. About, hey, guess like, what? My uncle was an FBI agent. I could sit there and claim that I have a dog in the fight too. It's like when people say the operation. We're saving children from being murdered. Like you know, it's like you get it's all over the top. It's not really. Like abortions aren't really saving babies. It's not like they're slaughtering like infants that are toddlers walking around. So it's like you guys, you put, put yourself up as these noble, heroic men. And you're just so great. You're the only ones who understand the Constitution. And all the people I talk to are either really kind of stupid or they're mentally unstable. That's the that's the and, yeah. and anyone else is reading articles making a mentally unstable. You're right. Yes. And you know who's the big one is that Alec Jones. He's the guy who's the most unstable. He but he's like Hitler with a little softer version. We, of we might edit just that little part out that you said. That was, that's pretty but, ridiculous. He's like crazy. Boston bomb, Boston Marathon bombs. Tamerlan Zarnoff interviewed by the FBI in 2011. Yet they you put his picture on. Know that I think he's insane and that he's Hitlerian. You can't let him know that. Uh, is he, sure, is I'm he sure that? he's going to watch this interview. Well, Alex Jones can kiss my in Macy's window, and you can bleep that. But I think is okay to say. So yeah, that's go. okay to say. Hey, what do you think about right, the? Cool. Um, what do you think about Bill Maher coming out and saying it was a police state? In Boston. He's a, he's a pretty liberal guy. Who, Bill Maher is no one who, like, sticks his foot in his mouth when he gets he gets a little full of his rhetoric and he goes too far. Okay. So he, also, he said that dropping bombs on – we were cowardly for dropping bombs on, on al-Qaeda al in Afghanistan back then when he – and I thought that was kind of lame. If, if what, I'm not gonna, if I, if I wear a helmet to battle, am I being, am I being a coward because I'm protecting myself? You drop a bomb on somebody, that's a smart way to fight a war. You don't yeah. go. You if don't you go, carry around a gun, though, does that make you crazy? Why does carrying, that, why does carrying around a gun make you crazy? I'm not. Some people are crazy and shouldn't carry guns, dude. Some people shouldn't be driving around. Some people should not be driving cars because they're like they're irresponsible or they're getting drunk or something. Not everybody. Instruments can kill people. You have to be super responsible to have one of those. You can't just let every. It's like dumbass. Well, have who a gets gun. to decide who's responsible? You. Well, no. Listen, but yes, yeah, somebody's got to set a standard. Okay. And it's not. It's a little bit too the loose. The standard's way too loose. I'm saying if you want on a gun you should be a deputy that you should go through training and be responsible and not just be some yahoo who likes to get drunk and shoot your gun in the air which i've done by the way i'm a hick i'm from upstate new york we grew up with a gun in the house i've shot guns i love guns but i don't love them enough that i think that everybody should be able to get slaughtering people and you know there's just a limit to what like i think i love guns but who gives a crap if what i like All you know right. I, mean? I, I used to really like cocaine i'm glad that's not legal so there you go <laughs> Speaking of bombs, um, the World Trade Center, do you remember the World Trade Center bombing in 93? Oh, yeah, I totally remember that. Yeah. And what are you going to say? That was, a, that was a government conspiracy, too? I, well, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm actually going to let Dan Rather say it. Let's roll the clip. I don't, Dan Rather, who gives a crap. Last winter, the FBI was praised for its speed in cracking the case of the World Trade Center bombing and bringing four suspects to trial. Now, there is some evidence that the FBI may have known of the plot in advance through an informant and might, might even have stopped the bombing that killed six people. Correspondent Jacqueline Adams has the story. FBI agents might have been able to prevent last February's deadly explosion at New York's World Trade Center. They discussed secretly substituting harmless powder for the explosives, but they didn't, according to the FBI's own informant, Imad Salem. Unbeknownst to the FBI at the time, Salem recorded many of his conversations with his handlers. I'm holding 903 pages right. of no, no, that's transcripts. Enough, 
Oh, yeah. Talking about Salon. So Salon so was this informant. Do you only use the news? Do you only quote the news when you agree with them? Because then everything else is like conspiracy and the news is like. No, because this only came out one or two times in the news and then it was quickly quieted down. Just like the, the stuff that went on with the underwear bomber. We can get into that if you want to. But I, I want to read you a couple a things. There's a book by Carl Sagan called The Demon Haunted World. And it talks about people with their kooky ideas. Mm -hmm. And there's also a book I read that had your buddy there, Alex Jones, in it about all these people that think like the world is run by 12 people in a dark room and somewhere underground. Yeah, and, you actually, know, I think that just came out in a Rolling Stone magazine. Matt Tabibi wrote that. And he actually said, We're right. It is a giant uh, conspiracy with yeah, the financial okay. games. But here, here. Oh, so Rolling Stone's not the last word on the truth either. I'm not so. saying it is, but I'm just saying what other people are saying. Frustrated, Salam told one FBI agent, you were informed everything is ready. And this is an article, not by us, it's from the online journal, Why the FBI Got Away with the First World Trade Center Bombing. I'll send you all these, don't worry. You were informed everything is ready. The day and the time. Book, lock them up, that's it. That's why I feel so bad. This is what he's saying on tapes to the FBI. Another tape revealed Salam asking an FBI agent, do you deny your supervisor is the main reason of the bombing of the World Trade Center? The agent did not deny Salam's charge. Shortly after the bombing, FBI agent Nancy Floyd confided in Salam that her supervisors botched the case. I felt that the people on the squad, that they didn't have a clue how to operate things, that the supervisors didn't know what was going on, and they didn't take the time to learn the history. Basically, what they did was provide a van, explosives, and a detonator to these guys to go drive into the World Trade Center saying it was going to be fake and they were going to stop them, but they wanted to bust this network up. This is their well, MO, and this is what they do time and time again. And I'm sorry you can't see that, and you don't like it when people ask questions. And just because you... Listen, I don't mind people asking questions. It's when they ask retarded questions, you get retarded answers, and that's what you get. So that's what you ask, and there you go. So I He don't asked a question if it was a false flag. He asked them straight up. He didn't try to hide it you with know anything. It's, just, it's kind of like when people get too into Jesus or too into Allah or whatever, or too into AA, they just become like, they become stage two in their, their personal growth. And it's going to take a lot of like time and critical thinking for you guys to work out of your, and most of you don't have a prayer. You guys are done. You guys will can stay in a stage two state of mind, and you can go look that up what that is. Okay. But that's where you guys suffer from. You're, I'm dealing with someone indoctrinated, and that's fine. And this is fun, and you guys made a cottage industry out of it, and this is your whole identity is about this. But I live in a great country, and I love my country, and you guys are making it suck, but I'm here to make it better, and there you go. So I don't know what to say, but keep spinning your wheels in the mud and keep trying to find that phantom and that big boogeyman of the FBI – because uh, I don't live in that world. I live in America, and I love my country, and I'm a patriot, and that's all there is to it. So, uh, well, so do you support the bombing? You support the bombing of with drones. You support that and the killing of little children across the the world. Black skies with drones. You're damn right, I do. Yeah. And, yeah, I know, I do. And I'm 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 all about whacking evildoers and whacking uh, evildoers. Even if yeah. we create them, even if we give them the money, even if we fund them. You know what, you guys? It's all fake, brother. The you whole world you're really told about is a total dream. When are you going to like I think you're the one living in the dream world. I'm not living in a dream world. My eyes are wide awake. Yeah. And there's nothing you can say. No, I'm used to this stuff. And you stuff. like, like having troops on the streets. That makes you feel Listen, safe, doesn't it? What makes me feel safe? Having troops on the streets. When there's an armed, like, terrorist through my neighborhood, you're right, it does. Who, do I, who else do I want? You morons with your guns? An, oh, you're, an you're unarmed 19-year-old? I, I want... You, Whatever, dude. Um, unarmed. And now, now there's tape the of him coming out. I, way, just so yeah. you know, I talk to people that live there who yeah. are watching out their windows, and they're not like part of these are like family members. There's an old couple that live there, and they they came home for vacation, and then they're looking at the guys, both both of them shooting at the cops. Like, so don't tell me like, oh, he's unarmed. He had something. He was armed with something when he went out when he was shooting at the cops. He wasn't using his finger. So don't give me this crap and like and re and, and make things up and like change. I'm not making like, anything up. They found him unarmed. And at first they reported he had an M4 in the boat with him. And then when they found him, he didn't have a gun. Oh, so, well, whatever. I don't know. And, I then, they, and then they cut his throat up so he can't talk. Apprehending the suspect. I was not privy, but I do know that I live two doors away from that house where the boat was. So I know exactly that, mm -hmm. that neighborhood. And it's just, I don't know. I know a lot more about this than you might think I do, but whatever. I know like the real stuff that you've already refuted is you say it's conspiracy, it's not true. But you know, that's fine. But the thing is that the problem, 
that I have with InfoWars. And, with, and Dan, as I said, is a sweet guy. He just doesn't have a mental defense against the allure of this, of having uh, the power of influence over people. And a bunch of people patting him on the back saying, you're doing a great job by asking stupid questions to the governor of Massachusetts. And it's just hijacking, a, hijacking a press conference the way these sons of did back in, uh, for like a Boston uh, nonstop flight from Boston to LA back in 2000. One. That's how you guys. This is just you. Just whatever. You guys are having fun. Probably a lot of you are in a malicious stuff. You're all into this gunplay. I get it. You guys are real patriot. You're real he men and all that. And you guys know what's really going on. But none of you are like. None of you are bright. The only one who's smart is Alex. He's probably the smartest one because he's the most charismatic. But he's also nuts. He's untreated. He's got untreated schizophrenia. So I mean, he's got to get that. He's got to get on top of that. Well, but, let's hope know. they don't put you in charge of who's crazy and who isn't in this world. Um, Listen, or who gets man, to own guns crazy. in this world. I know who's crazy. I have one. I'm plenty exposed to crazy people. Don't worry about that. All right. Well, that was Roger Nicholson. And uh, you, can, you can chat with him on Facebook at PitPat71. Uh, that was very interesting. He's, he's got a lot of anger. He's mad, which rightfully so. I'd be mad, too, if people... Especially if the FBI, have a, and we're gonna we're gonna find out who is behind this, and we're gonna put it out there whether people like Roger like it or not, and we're gonna ask questions to the to our government officials, our public servants, whether he likes it or not. And we're gonna keep doing it. We're not gonna stop. And these questions need to be asked. Notice how they stopped the press conferences really quick when Dan started asking questions about prior knowledge and other photos and false flags. They didn't want to talk about that stuff. They didn't want to talk about drills being done beforehand. They didn't want to talk about any of that. They wanted to run. As soon as those questions were asked, they only want to go by the script. I want to end quickly with a, a, a video from, I think this is from Robert Gibbs, who's our press was the press secretary for Obama, and he was told not to talk about the drone program that just shows this is what our government likes to do. They like to say, don't talk about this. This is off the table. And here's that clip. When I went through the process of becoming press secretary, one of the things, one of the first things they told me was, you're not even to acknowledge the drone program. You're not even to discuss that it exists. Wow. And so I would get a question like that, and literally, I, I couldn't tell you what major asked, because once I figured out it was about the drone program, <laughs> I realized I'm not supposed to talk about wow. it. And, but here's what's inherently crazy about that proposition. You're being asked a question based on reporting of a program that exists, <laughs> right? Yeah, there so you go. you're the official government spokesperson. Exactly. So, as if you know, we're not supposed to ask questions because we're crazy and we like guns. That's basically what we got from Roger Nicholson. And, you know, I didn't even bring up one InfoWars article. I have one here, but it links to other things. Tamerlan Zarnoff attended CIA-sponsored workshop. It's from Kurt Nemo. It uh, links to Izvetsia. Tamerlan Zarneva recruited via the Georgian Foundation. But let's look at all the rest of these. Boston Bomb Marathon, Tamerlan Zarnoff, interviewed by FBI in 2011. Senator Chambliss, the intelligence may have known about the bombings in advance. Bomb informers tape, this is, this is about World Trade Center 7, but this is a good one. Bomb informers tapes give rare glimpses of FBI dealings. Yeah, we like to cook bombs and train the drivers and give them the van and get them in there. Uh, here's another one. This is We linked to this, but you can no longer find it on Online Journal. Why the FBI got away with the first World Trade Center bombing. There's the Huffington Post article. Um, Washington Post. Anti-terror task force was warned of Tamerlan Zarnoff's long trip to Russia. Total conspiracy theory. New York Times. Terrorist plots hatched by the FBI. Talks about all the fake bombings that were brought on by informants. Russia warned FBI about bomber multiple times. But the feds are more interested in al-Qaeda than Chechens. And let's see if we got anything else. I think that's it. So that's what I brought to the table. He didn't really want to bring anything to the table. He just wanted to call us crazy, which is, you know, that's what they're doing right now. He is a product of his media. He was very happy that he was on MSNBC because that's who he looks up to. He looks up to GE, the company that brings big bombs to life and drones to life and then uses them to bomb other countries. Yet over lies. You know, you can go back to the Iraq war. Lie. 9-11. Well, if you believe in the official story, they were all from Saudi Arabia, or at least most of them were. Yeah, just read the comic book that they put out. So, there you go. I encourage you 
Send, what was his name, Richard? Roger, Roger Nicholson. Send Roger Nicholson some love via Facebook. Send him some knowledge. Don't be mean to him. He obviously needs to be educated a little bit, although he thinks he's found the truth and he knows exactly what it is. And he seems to like troops on the streets. And even though he was running around uh, busting, I think they said secure in home is what they called it. And uh, that was the order they put up. They wanted people to stay in their homes and not go out and then let cops come in there and pull people out. We're asking people to shelter in place. In other words, to stay indoors with their doors locked and not to open the door for anyone other than a, a properly identified law enforcement officer. And that applies uh, here in Watertown, where we are right now. Also Cambridge, Waltham, Newton, Belmont, and at this point, all of Boston. All of Boston. Shelter in place is what they called it. Shelter in place. Did we roll any of the footage of the cops, like, knocking people over and making them stick their hands up? Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. That was our interview, and that's our show. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central. It's the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. It's been quite a pleasure talking to the interesting people out there that think we're all crazy, and yet they're all sane, and they don't want to believe stuff when it's right in front of their eyes. Thank you and good night.